안녕하십니까. 일산 앞선 치과 김용진. My name is Kim Yong Jin. I'm with Ilsan Apson Dental Office. In this second lecture, I'm going to talk about how to use uh, one guide system properly. To use properly the one guide system of the Austin Digital Guided Surgery System, you need to understand how to use the one guide system and the characteristics of one guide template. Let's uh, look at the characteristics of the one guide kit. The surgical template of a one guide system is that it doesn't have the metal sleeve. Other companies have uh, the guide system with the metal sleeve. I don't really like the metal sleeve. The first reason is as follows. The fast running drill can have direct contact with the metal sleeve. The debris can be created and it can enter through the drilling hole and the infection can occur with the placed implant and can interfere with the OCO integration. The second reason, if you look at this video, many doctors say metal sleeve itself is increasing the accuracy of the implant placement. That is not the case. The metal sleeve is a stock product, but the surgical template is printed by a 3D printer. After that, a dentist or lab technician or digital center uh, would do the positioning of the metal sleeve. In positioning it, if metal sleeve doesn't go in properly and if there's angulation error, the drilling would have errors and the placed implant would have errors. Bonding of metal sleeve may have a positioning errors that can lead to the drilling and um, implant placement errors, so I don't trust it that much. Nobel Guide and early digital guide systems had metal guide system. Therefore, many people believe that metal sleeve would increase the accuracy. Therefore, uh, in order to find the evidence, I worked with uh, Professor Dallarico in Rome uh, and wrote this paper. And uh, the paper is published in a renowned COIR journal. Uh, if I summarize what we have found, the patients are divided into two groups. In one group, conventional one-guided template is used. In the other group, specially designed one-guided template to position the metal sleeve is used. Only OSTEM surgical kit and OSTEM TS implants are used. So in one group, OSTEM implants are placed using the one-guided template with metal sleeve. And in one group two, in group two, the one guide template without the sleeve on the market is used to place the TS implants. Pre-op planning data and the post-op CT data are superimposed to see the angular deviation and the three-dimensional implant positioning deviations using the four parameters. What do you think is the result of the analysis? As you can see, the group where implants are placed with a surgical template with a metal sleeve has many more vertical and angular errors. As I said before, the metal sleeve's positioning errors can cause implant vertical errors due to the unstable metal sleeve which has the angular deviations. The angular deviations are made. Therefore, based on this research, I don't believe the metal sleeve increases the accuracy of implants placed with the guide system. One guided template without sleeve shows superior accuracy. OSTEM's one guide template is sleeveless. There are two types. Closed type means uh, the guide hole is completely closed, so vertical access is possible. Uh, when a patient has an uh, opening problem and the uh, vertical access is difficult, uh, you could use the open type. You need to select which one to use. In order to use the digital guide system, uh, the patient's opening amount compared to the metal system is reduced. When you use the open guide system, lateral access is possible.
The guide drill itself is longer than those in the standard guide kit. The opposing tooth can interfere when vertical axis is used, so the lateral axis, especially in the most posterior region, can avoid the interference of the opposing tooth. This is another advantage. This is another company's digital surgical guide system with a metal sleeve. Let's look at the video. On the metal sleeve, even the drill key is attached to increase the accuracy of the 2.0 drill. The female patient in the 70s had a severe mouth opening problem. Only vertical access is allowed, so uh, the patient is suffering. It is difficult for her to open the mouth, and uh, 50 RPM low speed is recommended for the drill. During the drilling, she has to maintain the maximum opening. If she closes the mouth a little bit, the drill cannot go in. Even it is inserted, it is difficult to remove it. So I am forcing her to open the mouth to do this. Do you think this will be satisfactory for the patient and the dentist? I don't think so. Uh, the lateral access uh, system can sometimes uh, be very helpful. Uh, so the guided system is given up by the patient uh, because it was very difficult for her to keep opening her mouth for the duration of the low speed drilling. If someone can open the mouth that much, it would be no problem. In the anterior region, region it would be okay, but uh, the guide should be used in other areas of the mouth. The guided system uh, can make a thermal damage, and this can be reduced because lateral open system is used. Through the opening, irrigation, sufficient irrigation can be done. When the bone is expected to be hard, then sufficient uh, copious irrigation can help. In the most posterior region, in the mandible, in this case, the one guide, the sleeveless guide with the lateral opening was designed. The drills and the implant access the site laterally, so the case was done in a very easy way. By changing the guide hole position, mesiodistal and buccolical positions can be adjusted. People often ask how to adjust the vertical position of an implant using the surgical guide. So we need to understand the concept of the offset. Many dentists believe the thickness of a guide hole is the offset, but that is not true. Offset is from the top of the plant implant to the top of the guide hole made. It varies depending on a system. To use Ostim's one guide, you need to understand the offset of the system and use the dedicated kit to drill and place an implant through the offset. Thus, dedicated one guide kit is necessary. In other words, offset is from the top of the plant implant to the top of the guide hole that is to be made. One guide employs a single offset of 10.5 millimeters. Let's have a look at it again. If gingiva is that high and an implant is to be placed equicrystal, that is to the level of the crest, and the thickness of gingiva is 2 millimeters, the thickness of a guide hole is 8.5 millimeters because from the top of an implant to the top of a guide hole should be 10.5 millimeters. What if gingiva is thick, then the guide hole height should be lower. Let's assume that the guide height is 4 millimeters, the guide hole thickness should be 6.5, so 10.5 millimeters in total. In another situation, if you need to place an implant deeper, uh, the amount of subcrestally placed implant plus gingiva thickness and the guide hole thickness is the offset value. Once again, uh, offset is from the top of the plant implant to the top of the guide hole made based on the offset. By controlling the guide hole thickness, the vertical apical coronal positioning of an implant can be made.
We looked at the one guided template uh, that does not have uh, the metal sleeve, and the surgical template guide holes offset is 10.5 millimeters, which is a single dimension. To drill for and place an implant through the guide hole on the one guided template, a dedicated kit is used. Let's look at the one guided kit. Uh, many dentists are surprised to see so many drills. If you are used to taper kit or want to, to taper kit, you think this is too complicated. If you accurately understand the drilling sequence, one kite kit usage is very simple. At most, four drills need to be used. So uh, let me show you how you can use the system. One guide kit has uh, broadly two drilling parts. On the left, the blue part, and on the right, the red one. The letter W at the end means a wide hole. Let me explain. Uh, there is this guide barrel. When it comes to the one guide kit, guide holes are used for drilling and the implant placement. Uh, that part is called the guide barrel. There are two sizes of the barrel. Because there are two guide hole sizes in the one guide template. Uh, let me add one thing. In the one guide template, there are two guide hole sizes, 5.1 and 5.8. It's not something we can choose. When you place a 4.5 millimeter or less diameter implant, 5.1 millimeter guide hole is automatically generated. If you use one guide system for 4.5 millimeter or less diameter implant, 5.1 millimeter guide hole is generated. If you place a 5.0 millimeter implant, 4.8 millimeter guide hole is generated. So depending on the guide hole diameter, the size of the guide barrel to be used is different. That means when you place a 4.5 millimeter or less diameter implant, you need to choose drills from the left part. When you place a 5.0 millimeter diameter implant, you need to choose from the right side with the letter W. Uh, first, we need to use the tissue punch. The entry point to the soft tissue is made by removing the soft tissue. There are two types of tissue punch. One is used with the 5.1 guide hole and the other one with the wide hole with the W mark. The initial drills, the big difference between the one guide kit and the taper kit lies in the initial drills. The taper kit has lens drill or side cutting drill, but one guide kit does not have any of those. Uh, the initial drills have multi steps and look like this. They have multi or two steps. The maximum drilling depth is 5.7 millimeters, including the Y dimension. There is a drill in the one guide kit, but not in the taper kit. That is a flattening drill. When you can use the flattening drill proficiently, you can do the guided surgery well and place the implant properly and drill to the sufficient depth. Flattening drill looks like this. There are two guide barrels. One is for guide hole size 5.1 and the other one 5.8. For normal drilling, after opening a flap, the drill is driven until the stopper of the tapered drill reaches the top of the crest. But in a guided surgery, drilling is done through the guide hole, mostly in flapless surgery. We cannot see the inside, so mostly it is driven until the stopper of the drill reaches the top of the guide hole. But if you plan to place an implant deep, you can encounter this situation where the stopper of the initial drill cannot reach the top of the guide, guide hole. In that case, um, you can be frustrated. With the sufficient pressure applied, but the stopper of the initial drill cannot reach the top of the guide hole. If you look at the anatomy of the drill, the drill and um, barrel has transitional part. 
the bevel part. There's a no cutting edge there. The bevel part uh, meets the cortical bone at the top, then it cannot be advanced anymore. TS3 bone level internal connection type implants are placed one millimeter deeper subcrystal. Then the drill should go deeper, but the crystal bone meets the bevel part. It cannot be advanced anymore. You need to remove the drill and you need to flatten the crystal part so that you can go to the sufficient depth. Two millimeters of crystal bone can be removed using this flattening drill. Let me show you a case. Initial drill can go into the full depth means the stopper of the initial drill can reach the top of the guide hole. If you look at here, maxilla location 23, guide is fixed, initial drilling is done. The stopper cannot reach the top of the hole. If you just apply more pressure, it cannot advance. It will break the guide or displace the guide. So you need to use the flattening drill. Don't be alarmed. Use the flattening drill to grind the cortical bone like this. The crest of cortical bone is expanded. If you use the initial drill again, it will go down to the full depth, meaning the stopper of the drill will go down and reach the top of the guide hole. When you place it in the upper anterior, when it is planted to go deep subcrestally, when gingiva is thin to secure the biologic width, this can happen. Using the flattening drill properly, initial drilling will be done smoothly. Then the subsequent drilling will be no problem as they follow the initial drill path. After the initial drilling, the final drilling is done with the one guide drill. Most of the drills in the one guide kit are the one guide drills. The choice of the drills will be according to the size of the implant, that is 4.5 millimeters or smaller, or 5.0. The guide barrel sizes are 5.0 and 5.7. The tolerance between the guide barrel and the guide hole is 0.1 millimeters, maximizing the accuracy. The characteristics of the one guide drill is it is tapered. TS3 implants have a tapered body to increase stability and coordinate the interfering bone amount between the bone and the implant. The tapered drill will be better than the straight type. The straight drill is not good for accurate site preparation for tapered body implants. So, OSTEM adopted tapered drills. Other companies have a straight drills or drills of tapered epically and straight in the upper part. I believe you have already experienced excellent cutting efficiency of the tapered drills using the tapered kit. As their cutting efficiency is good, they generate much less heat even though the drilling is done through the guide hole. Compared to other companies' products, heat is generated much less. Unlike other companies' products, just like normal tapered drills, one guide drills can be used at high speed, 7 to 1500 RPM, depending on the bone quality. The generated heat is below 40 degrees Celsius. The high cutting efficiency greatly reduces the drilling sequence. At most, the full drilling is enough for hard bone, but uh, other companies need 10 to 12 times of drilling. More drilling does not mean more accurate. When a patient has a mouth opening limitation, fast and accurate drilling will maximize the accuracy of implant placement. Let's look at the video. Compared to other companies' products, the high speed can be used and the heat generation is much less. In other companies' cases, at first they started with 2.0 drill and increase only the depth. 
step by step going to 7 to 8.5 to 10 to 11.5 millimeters. The drilling sequence and the surgery time get long using many drills. Sometimes they use uh, low speed drilling due to the straight drills generating a lot of heat. During the procedure using a low speed, a patient should keep the mouth open for long. Low speed can reduce the heat generation, but compression damage can be a concern. One guide drilling sequence is the same as one to two taper kit drilling sequence. And if you use uh, one to two taper drill, you'll be able to follow this pretty quickly. Let me explain in more details. If you use one guide drill kit in placing a 3.5 millimeter implant, in soft bone, you need to one step under drill, and in hard bone, one step over drill, which is the same as the one to two taper drilling sequence. If you use a tapered kit, you are used to the taper cortical drilling, so this would be something new for you. When you use one guide kit in soft bone, you need to one size under drill, and in hard bone, one size over drill. To place 3.5 implant in normal bone, initial and 3.5 drills can be used, but how would you under drill in soft bone? Because 3.5 millimeter diameter drill is the smallest one, for such case, 2.2 millimeter drill is included. In soft bone, after initial drill, 2.2 straight drill is used before placing 3.5 implant immediately. In hard bone, F3.5 and the 4.0 one guided drills are used before placing 3.5 implant and you will get sufficient stability. Don't be too much worried about the numbers. To place the 3.5 implant in soft bone, 2.2 straight drill is included. In normal bone, 2.2 straight drill is not needed. To place a 4.0 implant after initial drill, 3.5 is used, followed by 4.0. In soft bone, up to 3.5 is used. In hard bone, up to 4.0. Now, it's a little tricky when we place 4.5 implant. Initial drill followed by 3.5 and up to 4.5 in normal bone. In soft bone, up to 4.0 is used, but Hard bone is uh, problematic. To do oversized drilling, you may think a 5.0 drill can be used, but a 5.0 drill is for 5.0 implant, so the guide barrel is 5.7, fitting the wide guide hole. If you plan the 4.5 implant, 5.1 millimeter guide hole is made, so the barrel size does not fit into it. How can you place 4.5 diameter implant in hard bone? 5.0 diameter one guide drill cannot be used, so for such case, a taper cortical drill is included only for 4.5 implant placement. Once again, in placing 4.5 millimeter diameter implant, one size bigger drilling cannot be done, so a cortical drill is there for 4.5 diameter implant. So some doctors ask why we don't have cortical drills for 3.5 and 4.0, so I'm explaining. Uh, it is there, F4.5 cortical drill is used to place 4.5 implant in heart bone. When we place 5.0 implant, a 5.8 millimeter guide hole is made. All drills should be chosen from the right side with the W mark. If you use a drill on the left side with the 5.1 guide barrel, you can do the drilling but with less accuracy, leading to angular deviations. For wide holes, drills with a W mark should be used. Initial drill, then 3.5. In soft bone, up to 4.5 drill is used before implant placement. 5.0 in normal bone and 5.5 oversized drilling in hard bone before implant placement. This is the video I took myself. You can see the drill is tilting. 
And people ask why is that, and other companies attack us with that. One guy, the system does not have the metal sleeve, therefore it is tilting, so it cannot be accurate. But clinically, you don't need to be worried about that. When you use one guy drill as the final drill, clinically no angular deviations occur. The gap of 0.1 millimeter makes it tilting outside like this, but clinically uh, it is very accurate because. During initial drilling, the guide barrel, the guide barrel part and the inner part of the guide hole makes only a single contact. After the accurate initial drilling, if you use uh, one guided drill as the final drill, one more contact is made. As uh, you saw in the video, the apex of the drill is in the air, not touching anything. So the 0.1 millimeter gap in the guide barrel makes it tilting. But clinically, after initial drilling, the one guided drill's apex is in contact, and another contact between the guide barrel and the inside of the guide hole. Double contact is made. Therefore, um, Angular deviation is something you do not need to be worrying. Initial drilling is very important to induce the drill apex to come in contact with the bone. But initial drill does not contact the bone. The contact is only between the guide barrel and the inside of the guide hole. So accurate initial drilling is important. So don't rotate the initial drill outside of the mouth, but push it down through the guide hole without rotating until the guide barrel touches the guide hole, and then rotate it by stepping on the pedal to make the drilling go as planned. Next, after accurate initial drilling, final drilling is done using the one guide drill, and implant placement can be done using these tools. No mounted driver is used with a handpiece to place an implant through a guide hole. It is better to place up to 50 to 80 percent of the implant length with this no mounted driver. It looks like this. Installation depth control and hex position can be done with this. Next, the fixture driver. As you can see, uh, this looks different from the no mount driver. The guide length is uh, 8 millimeters in no mount driver. In, ca in the case of the fixture driver, it's uh, 4 to 4.5 mil millimeter long because when you use a fixture driver, it can jam into the guide hole, so the diameter is reduced by about 0.3 millimeters, and the uh, guide length is reduced. To place uh, deep enough subcrystally, the guide barrel is reduced to accurately place uh, an implant. No mounted driver should be used to place up to 50 to 80 percent of the implant length, and the rest can be placed with the fixture driver uh, without jamming. If you place uh, more than 50 percent of the length with the fixture driver, the guide hole and the barrel may not come in contact, then the angulation problem may occur and it will become less accurate. That's my clinical tip. The yellow slot part should align with the guide hole. Then, as TS is internal hex type implant, the internal hex can be positioned as planned. As you can see, here the fixture is not fully placed. The top of the no-mount driver or fixture driver should align with the top of the guide hole. This shows good depth control. The yellow slot marking is completely seen through the one guide hole. The hex positioning is uh, completed. This is not fully inserted. This shows full depth control and hex positioning. If you keep this in mind, you will be able to place uh, the implants properly using the one guide hole.
using the fixture driver, the remaining 20% of the placement can be done by checking insertion torque like this. Hex positioning and depth control can be done. The top of that should align with the top of the guide hole. Up to now, one guide kit and templates how to use and uh, characteristics have been discussed. I will handle address two questions that I've received a lot uh, during the hands-on. Is hex positioning absolutely necessary? Depth control is necessary, but do we really need to do the hex positioning? After placing the implant, prefabricated abutment, and temporaries can be used for immediate loading, then this is necessary. But if you are using an abutment without hex, hex positioning is not important. The prefabricated abutment, if it is a hex type, hex positioning is necessary. Otherwise, this is not um, absolutely necessary. If you are not going to do the immediate loading and uh, it, if it will be loaded after the OC integration, this is not that, that meaningful, but epical coronal depth control should be done. The second one is, do we have to use a tissue punch? Can we drill directly? I don't use the tissue punch very frequently. I use it when the gingiva is uh, thick, 3 millimeters or thicker. The soft tissue may go into the flutes of a drill, lowering the cutting efficiency, generating a lot of heat. Then the p tissue punch can be used, but when gingiva is thin, I drill directly. According to many papers, even if soft tissue debris go into the bone drilling site, it does not interfere with the osseo integration. So you can drill directly when gingiva is thin, but use the tissue punch when keratinized tissue and the soft tissue is thick, like in the upper posterior after healing. I have talked about one guide kit. Next time, I'll talk about one MS kit, which is very helpful for placing implants in lower anterior or on a narrow ridge. And I'm going to also talk about the clinical cases. Thank you.